guys. So today we're going to go through the deadlift. We're going to go through correct technique, but also common faults that you might come across um, either in your own lifting or that your clients may be experiencing and how you can help them to correct that. So first things first, with the deadlift, we are looking for it to be a hip hinge movement, meaning that predominantly you're folding at the hips rather than bending at the knees. So there is going to be some knee bend. We will see that when we've got Adam doing the deadlift for us. But the main thing you want to think about here, fold at the hips, meaning we're working the whole posterior chain. So that is all the way up the back of your body. Hamstrings are going to be really, really working here. Glutes, the whole of the back. So if we get Adam to just set up, so we're going to go through correct te technique first. So he's got his feet at hip width. That's it, if you go for a few reps for me, Ads. Nice, okay, just stop there. So we'll go through the setup. We've seen a few reps first. So a good way to think about doing, um, getting your feet in the right position, you want them at hip width. A good way to sort of get this correct is just to do a few jumps. Don't think about it. Where your feet land, that's about hip width, okay? So, Ads, if you could do that for me. Perfect, okay, so we want him to be fairly close to the bar. So come in a little bit. You don't need to have your, uh, the, the bar actually touching your shins. It can be slightly over, so we're looking for it about over the center of the foot. Okay, so hit from here. What we wanna make sure with the deadlift is that the spine is completely neutral. Okay, so you can kind of almost imagine, sometimes I say to my clients, imagine from about the hips up, you're almost wooden. That bit's not gonna move at all. So your back is working here, but it's what we call an isometric contraction. So your back's staying entirely straight. The movement is coming from the hips. So to get into a good position, what you can do is do an imaginary deadlift on the way down. So Adam, you're gonna start off, brace your core, draw that belly button in, shoulders back and down. It's almost like you're putting your shoulders in your back pocket. And then you can imagine you've got a big button on the wall behind you. You're gonna send your butt back to try and hit that big red button with your bum. So the fold's coming from your hips. That's it, so now take hold of the bar. So you can see here, Adam's back is perfectly straight, right? So there's, there's no rounding here. From here, he's gonna push the floor away, stand up and squeeze his bum. And this is where the rep is complete, okay? So what we're looking for is that his hips are fully locked out. Okay, he's standing with the bar nice and close, it's in contact. On the way back down, you just do exactly the same thing, but in reverse. So the bar stays super close. It's almost like you're shaving your legs with the bar, sending the hips back. Core stays braced, his back hasn't rounded. And you can see here in the finished position, he's set up to go for his next rep. It looks exactly the same. So if I was to show you a, a freeze frame, you wouldn't know whether he's just finished his rep or if he's about to start the next one. It should look exactly the same. Okay, so next we're gonna go for a few common problems. So you might see your clients doing perfect reps. Great job. There's a few little things that can go wrong here. So number one would be the back rounding a little bit. So um, Adam's gonna show us a few incorrect reps. So this is what we don't wanna see. So see here how this is happening, right? We're getting that spine rounding. This is a massive no-no. We really, really don't want this. Unfortunately, quite a common problem. So just stop there, Ad. Right? So you can see he's rounding here. As soon as this happens, there's not really much of the weight in the hamstrings, right? A lot of the weight is coming through the lower back. We don't want this. Although I said you want your back working, it's gonna be working to hold that bar in place, we don't want it moving like this. There shouldn't be movement coming through the spine. We don't want to be loading the spine through flexion. So that's where the back's rounding. So reasons for this might be tight hamstrings. So if your client's really struggling to hold this hip hinge position, they might have to try and sort of find the floor by rounding their back. So what I might get my client to do here is go for a Romanian deadlift. So I'm going to show you that option here, so you start at the top here with a Romanian deadlift, just go down to the point that you can manage so he can maintain that nice flat back and then come back up. That's it, so you can see you could go down to the point where they were gonna bend their back and then ask them to come back up. An alternative might be a rack pull, so we do the exact same thing. We'd set up our safety bars 
here and you just lift from the bar. So rather than going from the floor, we'd put the bar elevated and he'd start from here, just stand up. So you're reducing that range of motion. So that'd be a really, really, really good way to correct it. It could just be that your client doesn't know that their back should be rounding. All they're thinking about is, have I picked the bar up from the floor? And they just sort of go to do it. Yes, I have. We need to explain to them then, you've got to keep that back super, super straight. So hopefully that will correct that one. The next one we're going to go for is the opposite, where they're hyperextending their back. So if you just show us a few like that, Adam. So you see, this is quite common. You get that lean back. Nice. So again, probably, I'd say slightly less of an issue, but repeatedly doing that and really overextending, that's going to really, really put pressure on these um, muscles that line your spine. We don't really want that either. That's a pretty easy one to correct. As you can see, Adam's back was really straight. But just really reinforce with your client, the rep is finished when your hips are locked out. So if you ask your client to squeeze their butt and squeeze their quads as well at the top, if I'm doing both of these things, it's actually quite hard for me to lean back. So a lot of the time it's kind of, they're trying to really pull that, I get that last little bit of pull and they just lean back, they're using their back. But here my quads have kind of switched off. So just really reinforce with them. Stand up, squeeze your butt. Then that's going to be perfect there. Let's finish at the top. Next one we've got is the bar getting away from you a little bit. So, as I said at the beginning, we want the bar staying super close to the body throughout. So, it's almost like you're shaving your legs with the bar. If the bar gets away from you, it'll look a bit like this. That's it, so especially on the way down. That's it, so you can see here, if you can exaggerate it even more, Adam. So start with the bar in front of you. So even further forward, where it might be. Here, this is going to put loads of pressure on this part of Adam's back. So if, he, if it's too close, we'd ask him to roll it back so it's over the centre of his foot. And now lift again. This is much, much better. A lot of the time, I'd see people actually letting the bar get away from them as they're lowering it. So you can always tell your client, imagine they're shading their legs with the bar. So see, keep it almost touching your legs as you go down, Adam. Sending that butt back. Perfect, really, really nice. So that would be a much better um, technique there. If they're um, letting it get away from them regularly, sometimes it can be just the case they're not really engaging their lats. So again, ask them to squeeze their shoulder blades back and down and almost feel like they're pressing the bar slightly towards their body. All right, next fault we're going for is one you might have heard being called the stripper deadlift. So when we're doing a deadlift, we really want to be coming up with the knees and hips at about the same pace. A stripper deadlift is going to look a bit more like this. Butt up, then back. A lot of these problems were really um, where you might sort of start to experience pain or injury would be in the lower back. So with a stripper deadlift, you've kind of taken the hamstring drive out of it with the butt coming up and then the back's having to do a lot of the work there. So you see here, the butt's coming up first. I'd say this is one of the most common because you'd look at this and you could easily see it as a coach and just think, yeah, Adam's back straight, fine, he's doing a great deadlift. As the weight gets heavier on the bar here, he's actually going to start to have some real problems. He's first of all putting pressure through his back. Second of all, he's not really using his legs at all. So what I'd ask him to do here, start from the bottom. You need to, as a coach, externalise the cue. If I just say to Adam, don't let your butt come up first, he might not be able to tell that he's doing that. So instead, what I might say is, rather than think about pulling the bar, I want you to think about pushing the floor away. So he's in this setup position. A lot of the time in deadlifts, people are just focusing on pulling the bar up. Rather, think about plugging your feet into the floor, pushing, and then drive the hips through. That's it, so really strong drive. So you can imagine, you can see how much more he's driving through his legs now. Now that's only 25 kilos on the bar, but if that's 200 kilos, you want it to look the same. This shouldn't be changing as the weight gets heavier. 